everyone. Welcome to The Zest, the official podcast of Orange Coast Magazine. I'm Chelsea Raineri, and today's guest is the executive producer of Good Day LA, a professor at Chapman University, and an Emmy Award winner. Thank you so much for being here today, Michelle Polfrey. Thank you for having me, Chelsea. I'm excited to join. Of course. I actually, when I was researching you, I saw that you're a Chapman alumni and I am too. So small world. I love it. There's so many. There's so many of us. I know. It's crazy. Yes. They're my interns. They're my coworkers now. It's incredible. Oh, and I love that. Um, So we featured you in our April issue for Orange Coast. And I was reading through it and I loved the short story that you shared about what initially inspired you to get into producing. Do you mind resharing that? Yeah. When I was growing up, I grew up in Colorado and my dad had a friend who was actually a sports anchor um, Mm. at the local news station. It was channel two in Denver. And for career day, I couldn't think of anything I wanted to do. So I said, I'd like to go to work with Greg and see what he does as the sports anchor all day. And my dad was super into sports. So I went to the news station and part of the morning meeting was meeting the people who, you know, you sit in this big conference room and I was in sixth grade. So I guess you're 12 and you're sitting in this conference room of a bunch of people. And it was a woman who was in charge of the meeting. And she was, you know, what are our reporters have today? And you know, <laughs> what stories will we cover? And what's going on in sports over there? And, you know, I was like, oh, what's this? And he said, oh, that's the executive producer. Like she makes all the decisions. She decides, you know, what stories go where and who does what. And it's like, that sounds like fun. And I had yeah. such a great time that day and such a great experience that I just sort of decided right then I wanted to be in broadcast journalism, but um, always from the producing side, always from behind the scenes. Wow. That's so cool. Came to fruition too. But I remember when I was a kid, I really wanted to be like an actress. And so it's also also never happened. But I would like, I have all these embarrassing videos of me like recording like fake movies and stuff like that. Did you... Um, kind of take that on as a kid? And like, did how did you pursue this passion? Um, so where I went to high school in Littleton, Colorado, we actually were one of two high schools in Colorado that had at the time a TV studio. So oh, we what? It, but not, I mean, look, it was just one of those, <laughs> I think it was a huge donor thing. They had gotten some money and it was, and I mean, you have to remember this is in the nineties. So yeah. <laughs> it wasn't, you know, what it is now. It was a couple of cameras and you were reading like the student um, announcements of the day or whatever. Oh. And I was like, oh, I want to do that. And I was in yearbook and it was all sort of tied together in the journalism front. And to be honest with you in high school, I think that's sort of where you figure out like, I really don't mm-hmm. like that. I don't want to be in accounting or um, science isn't my jam. I don't think I'm going to be a doctor. So yeah. that's kind of where I was like writing came easily to me and I liked being creative. And so from high school, when I was applying to colleges, it was super important to me to find a school that had an amazing broadcast program that you didn't have to then apply to after college, that you could get in and sort of hit the ground running and your GEs were really more backed up into your major. So that's where Chapman became that choice. That was kind of a long answer to your question, but... No, yeah. How did, like, how did you find Chapman? I I grew up right oh now. I love that that question because yeah. is, is I fell upon Chapman on accident. I actually was going to another college and I was going to meet them in person at one of those big, you know, the high schools you would have those yeah. college fairs, right? Uh-huh. So I was going to meet the person who was sort of recruiting me to go to that college and I was so excited. And my dad came and right next to their table was Chapman. And when I tell uh-huh. you I was already into that school, like dorm picked out everything. And then the Chapman table was right next to their table. And Mike Pelly at the time was uh-huh. still in admission. So wonderful. Um, you know, said to me, we have an awesome broadcast program and I bet you, you could get a scholarship because you have all this experience in high school. So I did. And wow. when I got the acceptance letter, I was so blown away that I was going to go there instead of somewhere in the Midwest that I was like, yes, let's get on a plane and go. We visited. Wow. Club. Yeah. Go Chapman for like advocating out out in the different states. Obviously, obviously right. they do that, but right? Yeah, I didn't know. Well, I was um, really there for all the lacrosse guys, but <laughs> true. <laughs> Very true. Um, so, like you said, you got your BFA in broadcast journalism and production, and we've had so many success stories come out of that school at Chapman, like mm-hmm. the Duffer Brothers and you. And um, what was some of your biggest takeaways from your time studying there? I mean, I think the thing that really drew me to Chapman that I still love to this day, that's why I wanted to go back was how small the classes are, Mm -hmm. classes are, 
And I'm sure you have the same, like I have this favorite professor and there's a reason why there's like a personal connection there as opposed to just, I like their class. And I yeah. feel like Chapman is one of those places that really encourages all of my students text me, ask me questions, um, yeah. ask for recommendations for internships come visit me in my classes. I had just finished my third semester this spring. Um, oh, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. And they, I've taught different, I started off with like intro to broadcast and then, you know, news writing and stuff. So they come visit me like, what are you going to teach next semester? I want to take your class or, you know, what do you think about this career choice for me? So it's really sweet that they have such a good experience and they want to come see me or, you know, stay in touch. I love that. Definitely. What made you want to go back and teach there? Um, I think the thing that I have to offer that might be different than some of the alumni, I guess, is that mm -hmm. I'm still local, that I work still in the news. And the one thing that I really sort of, you know, prided myself upon was when I did teach every single semester, instead of using just Chapman's curriculum, I, mm -hmm. I used it as sort of like a guidepost. And instead took my computer from work, brought up AP stories that we're working on today, brought up oh. the rundown and all the students were like, what? They all got to go to Good Day LA every single semester, what? have a shadow day. And they, I mean, it's all over my LinkedIn. It's kind of crazy. All the students that come, they take pictures, they get to shadow somebody who they want to, like they get to reenact my sixth grade career day. Um, oh. But I think it just motivates them. And they all say after the semester, they work up to it. And after the semester, they all say it's their favorite. Thing that they got to enjoy, you know, so it makes yeah. you well rounded. Like, this is what you're working towards. Like, I want you to know that this is what we really just did at work today. These are the stories that we really wrote today. Like, now let's you, you try it. You write those videos, you write those stories, you pitch stories to me and see what would make our rundown today. And it makes them feel a part of like, wow, you actually know you were just there. Yeah. It makes it feel so much more real too. Cause I took so many different classes, but I never got to actually experience something hands on and like, in person like that too. Yeah. And, um, and internships, I have tons of friends in the business. So, um, I've also gotten students jobs at variety and Oh my God. 11. Yeah. So they're all telling me where, you know, Oh, it worked out. Thanks for the, you know, the heads up on that job. It's so great. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and I read that you like started your job one day after you graduated as a production assistant. Yeah. Yeah. That's we, wild. Saturday back then. And, um, I started on a Monday. Wow. Yeah, like How did that party for like five minutes? Go to bed. Yeah. I started at 2 AM. Oh. Like, I started at 2 AM. I think I was just so happy to have a job when all my friends, you know, that feeling graduated. Yes. It's so scary. What do I do? <laughs> Where am I going to live? And I think my mom and dad were like, you have three months to figure it out. We're not paying for this, you know? California lifestyle for fun. I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> graduation. Then I found out that I got the job at Fox 11, but I was oh a assistant. I ripped scripts. I got pens. If the, you know what I mean? I did whatever they needed. How did you get the job? How did you come to find it? Um, my whole life story is this crazy trajectory of wild circumstance, but at Chapman, uh -huh. when I was a senior, a friend of mine in our class, his name was Mir Tukey already was interning at Fox on Good Day LA. So he had access to the graphics and all of these things. So for our senior project that year, we were then Steve, Jillian, and Dorothy were the hosts of Good Day LA. So we pretended to be them and he had the graphics and we were like Chapman's Good Day LA. And he showed it to Steve, Jillian, and Dorothy. They thought we were so funny that they brought us all in and dressed us like them, like had hair and makeup do oh my God. look like them. And I don't know what, I was thinking, Chelsea, I'm telling you, I show up like senior in college with a resume, like I've worked on Chapman News and Nightcap. <laughs> and he's literally, he reads it and he says, I'm telling you, he says, Tom Searson's his name. God bless. I love you, Tom Searson, forever and ever. And Jose Rios, shout out to like the two people who really gave me a career. Um, oh. But and Jillian, of course, but I digress. But Tom basically said, Oh, yeah, this looks great. Um, can you start Monday? And I remember wanting to break down in tears because I was still in college. And I like didn't have a car yet. I was like, I don't oh, know what right. And I just learned in college, you just say yes. And I was like, right. But can it wait? Like this was March. And I'm like, but oh. can it wait till May, I graduate on whatever the day. And he's like, Yeah, sure. And I go, don't you want to see my diploma? And he's like, <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I know. Did I need to finish college? Did I need to? Yeah. So anyway. Wow, yeah. they loved you. That's so, that's incredible. Um, do you remember the first day in the newsroom? Like what that feeling was oh like? I got really overdressed. I bought a suit at PB. <laughs> oh, I would have done that too. That seems like what you're supposed to wear. I just, what was I thinking? I literally went to TV and got like a full suit. And I remember thinking it was so expensive. I was like, oh. I don't have this money yet. And I'm buying a suit at BB. Who am I? And then my very first day, everybody's like, oh, are you the new reporter? Oh, because yeah, they could tell them why you're, how you were dressed. And That's now, so all the product, you know, you wear like jeans and Converse and, you know, a sweater. Yeah. So. Oh, so it's much more comfortable, especially like uh, before we started recording, you said you get up at 2.30 in the morning. Yeah. So yeah, jeans and a sweater would be my go-to. Yeah. Every day it's cold in the studio. So no matter what time of year it is, you'll walk out there in the summer and be like, oh my God, it's 85. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. God, I can't even imagine. Yeah. Uh, what were some of the challenges that you faced initially when you were learning? Um, One of the most interesting stories, I think, for the first sort of year that I was there was I was a production assistant. And like I said, that really was back in the day, you used to like rip scripts yellow for this oh. anchor, for this one. Um, you would literally get pens, answer phones, divvy up mail, like really whatever they asked you to do. And I was happy to do it, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and then one of my other favorite stories is the field producer for Good Day LA at the time was leaving to go start a new TV show for Fox. And everybody was making fun of him. Like, who's going to watch this talent show where everybody like sings and it's called American Idol. <gasps> what? Yeah. You Mike knew the guy that started that? That's crazy. Mike Darnell like went on to make so much money with his like <laughs> yeah. great ideas. Um, so anyway, what that job next was, which you normally need a really long time to sort of like earn your way up. But mm -hmm. that job just so happened to be open. And they said, you're so outgoing. This is so your style. You're going to go out in the field and field produce. So live shots every morning, but you're just behind the scenes. You'll find interesting things to feature write up a little blurb for them to read on camera. And you're just going to be behind the scenes, showing them the new Krispy Kreme opening, showing them the new Disneyland parade in the morning, whatever it is. And then eventually they started calling me on camera. Michelle, are you out oh. there? Michelle, are you out there? <laughs> so I ended up on camera inadvertently all the time back in the day. Oh, so you were field producing and reporting? Field producing and answering their questions live on oh. TV, I think would be more oh. accurate. Because I was literally in, again, jeans and Converse. <laughs> you were an actual reporter. Yeah. Oh, man. That sounds really fun, though. It's the best job. It still is the best job. I mean, we're really lucky. It's really hard some days, but we are really lucky. I saw that you also had the role of style field producer. Style file? Right? Style, style file producer. Yeah. yeah. What is that? So style file was Jillian's, um, Jillian, who was one of the original hosts of Good Day LA. She came up with that whole concept and her original producer, Carlota Espinosa, um, Carlota left to start her amazing company called Hot Look at the time. Now, since she's sold and she's working with Tyler Perry and doing amazing things on her own. Wow. But I know like, that's the thing. It's like our world becomes so <laughs> so quickly and all the things, but, um, so style file was really their invention, but when I took it over, it was 2006 or 2005. And mm -hmm. we literally would be like Christian Louboutin's in town. Let's go meet him and find out the trends for spring or, you know, let's go to the Mac makeup counter and find out mm -hmm. what's going on there. Or let's go to a fashion show or go to fashion week in New York and feature. So it was kind of like if you opened in style or glamour or L in those times, anything that you would see in those magazines was style file. And it was every day. Mm -hmm. Twice a day, we ran different stuff. And it was really Jillian's like thing. Like it was her thing that I just sort of produced for her. It was a lot of her ideas. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did it together, but it was, you know, a combination of everything from fashion style, lifestyle, home decorating. So I got to meet so many people in that world as well. That sounds like the dream. How fun. Like <laughs> literally, that's so cool getting to go to New York Fashion Week. Uh, oh so many when times too, and just... It's amazing. And it's such a fun thing to do when you live in California to like go and, you know, experience fashion week in New York. And it's like nothing yeah. about when you come back and you're like, oh, it's calm. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't even imagine. Well, we're, so were you working on Good Day LA at the same time too? That was for Good Day LA. It was a segment. Oh, got it. Show. But at the same time, I mean, the weird thing about, um, the weird thing about the show and Good Day LA was so I started, I field produced for a few years and mm -hmm. then um, 
I mean, and in that time, like 9-11 happened and we were in the field and we had to go to the airport right away and oh, wow. just go to the airport. So I was like, am I getting in on the plane right now? Like we didn't really know what was happening. It was 9-11. So like there was a lot of things that I had like worked up to. So by the time Style File came along, I was like ready to have a little more of a, um, you know, like, okay, I can plan my day and know where I'm oh, yeah. interviewing and what's going on. Um, yeah. So there was a, yeah. a lot of those things that happened in between those times, but field producing sort of encompassed a huge role for those. I mean, we were lo- a national show from 2000, yeah. 2005, I think. So oh, I was okay. in LA and Good Day Live and traveling and doing set visits to TV shows multiple times a week, live oh. with this like Dharma and Greg or the set of um, Just Shoot Me with David Spade. Yeah. How cool. What, we were, what were your days like? Morning for breakfast, like insane, insane stories. Yeah. What was, um, what were your days like? Were you just like constantly like out? Like what were, yeah, I had like? a photographer pick me up at my house because I lived really close to the station then. Um, uh-huh. 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., but Good Day LA was on different hours then. So, um, we started at five, but he would pick me up at six after we figured out all of our stuff. And then he would just drop me off at two when his day was over. Oh, nice. What was, you mentioned you had some great stories about then. Do you have a favorite memory or a favorite story? Um, oh my gosh, there's so many. <laughs> I mean, some of my favorite stories sort of are just the moments that you got to have that you, your mm. pinch me moments that you never thought in your wildest dreams. So when we were national, we did a lot of, like I said, set visits, we were live in people's homes often. And when you do this job, it's kind of hard to tell stories like this without a seeming like humble brag. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> to do this and that, but it really is like, I am after all, like a girl who was born in New Jersey and grew up there for a while. And then mostly Colorado. And it really wasn't anything about celebrities growing up. It wasn't a big, mm. you know what I mean? Like when you live in California, it's a part of the culture here, but growing up, Definitely. You know, celebrities aren't really a thing. You know what I'm saying? So in the trajectory of my career, um, going to Carrie Fisher's house oh. and like she was working on a documentary series and we got to, she answered the door herself. <laughs> she was wearing this like beautiful, like Mrs. Roper sort of like outfit. <laughs> and she was like, come on in with her raspy voice. And like, you're so surprised when people would answer their own doors and it wouldn't be their assistant. And she's like, come right. on back. And she literally sat with us for an hour while the guys set up and she, smoked her cigarette and drank coffee oh and, with us and um we did something at Lionel Richie's house once what thing he was like come on in and he sat at his piano and he's like come sit out and he's literally singing ballerina girl and I'm <gasps> sitting in Lionel Richie's house at his piano like oh my god my life you know what I mean but yeah. like, I actually still have those moments where I feel like this is incredible as yeah well. oh that was Tuesday you know. Right, 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 right. You're, yeah, it's still, you don't take it for granted. Right. Or, yeah. or you try to remember in these moments, like it's not, there's days that are definitely not that. So you take, this right. Moment, so that was such a special thing. You know, I was, yeah. to play a, for, for, you know, Halloween. So right. you're just like, I'm sitting at her house. <laughs> like, what is my life? Like truly. <laughs> Yeah, that's wild. Um, and then in 2020, you were nominated for your first Emmy and you won. So in right? 2020, I was technically uh-huh. over there on the on the shelf, but um, I won my first Emmy in 2000. But that 2000. was... Okay. No, 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 but you're right. I was nominated for my own Emmy for the first time in 2020. Oh. I won an Emmy for Good Day LA as a producer in 2020. Um, okay. I mean, in, in, in 2000. 2000. Um, in 2020, I, I was nominated for Amanda Salas. She's our entertainment reporter. She was diagnosed with cancer. And mm. then I was a senior producer and they assigned me her story. And so we had to film, like she had just lost her hair and gone through this whole like head shaving thing. So we did a whole story on Amanda and it was nominated for an Emmy. We did wow. but we were nominated. Yeah. What is something about the Emmys that people wouldn't expect? Because I picture this like the most glamorous evening. <laughs> no, <laughs> the real Emmys, yes. The TV Emmys, like okay. the Emmys, not. I mean, it's fine. No, 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 it's all great. We love it. But I mean, I think it's just like the perception is so different. You know what I mean? Like you uh-huh. live 
just like anything else, you're sitting in this ballroom. I think the most fun about the local Emmys is seeing all of your friends and colleagues in the business. Um, if you take the awards part too seriously, I think you're always going to be disappointed. You know what I mean? Right. Did yeah. you prepare a speech and stuff for... Yeah, only just because it was Amanda and I didn't want to let her down and she was still battling oh. cancer when it was, you know what I mean? So uh-huh. we did, it was during COVID. So we watched it together in, you know, yeah, feet apart. So it was kind of nice that we got to like, at least share, like you're here with me to have this moment we can watch together, but yeah, that's so nice. Yeah. Um, we could watch ourselves lose together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh and so then the, for your 25th anniversary you're promoted to your current role as executive producer of good day la which yeah. congratulations um so can you kind of walk us through what a typical day looks like for you okay so our morning starts at 2 30 we have an editorial <laughs> call I know. I know it's so funny because to me yes it's early um because my old wake-up time was 3 45 but oh know. wow so 2.30 is the reporters and all the producers are on the call and you're deciding where are you sending your reporters for their first hit is at four o'clock in the morning. So where are you sending them? There's two of them. Um, mm-hmm. Where are you sending your next two reporters who will come in? What are the stories that we're covering? What do we all think the top stories are? What's the video we got in from overnight? Um, and then we sort of meet about that. And then as we get into work, that's not there, by the way. I'm up at 2.30 okay. on the call for that one. They're okay. there by the way, but there's two EPs of Good Day LA, one that handles the really, really early, early parts. And then I sort of pick up at like the seven o'clock hour. Oh, okay. No, I mean, it's all, it's just eight hours of show. So you need the help. And we are very, one handles like news editorial. I handle a lot more of the content and the the day-to-day stuff like that. So Josh is the other executive producer and he was the executive producer when I started. So it's a crazy moment that, yeah. When I came in, even as a Chapman student pretending to be Jillian and all the things, Josh. <laughs> so he just celebrated 30 years and I have 26 years next week. Oh my God. Go, go, go. Congratulations. Yeah. That's amazing. So, wow. Yeah, so That's then you kind of do all of the show. We, how we lay it out, what guests we're going to have on. And by the time all that's done, I mean, I'm telling you, it's six o'clock in the morning, the show's on the air, and it's just run and gun till noon. We're on the air. Yeah. What's um, some of your favorite uh, memories that you have from being in the newsroom? Um, gosh. Newsroom. It's so funny. Like, I have so many more, like, memories from being out in the field. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess memories in a newsroom are different. Um, in the sense that I guess you could say like 9-11 would be a big memory or, oh yeah, you know, like some of those things are more the memories of like, how are you going to approach the story? How do you start covering something? So, you know what I mean? Like COVID I think was a big, yeah, those are more memories. I, and I know it's different. There's just not the same kind of like when you go to a job where your whole job is informing the public and deciding what news is told and how much of that news is told, it's mm-hmm. a weighty responsibility. So I think those are the moments where you really sort of like, I have to remember to keep my emotions out of this, you know, do the story. Oh, that'd be hard. Yeah. So, I mean, some of those times where it's like not good or bad, but I would say like mm-hmm. the Sandy hooks, the Boston bombings, the COVIDs, the nine elevens are more where you sort of see how you work as a team for real. You know what I mean? When the pressure's on or sometimes even the pursuits, like it's so funny, but sometimes the pursuits <laughs> be the most fun you can have in the morning. <laughs> that unpredictable reality TV. Um, you never know. There was that one on the 405 the other morning. This is going to be so dated, but um, the 405 the other morning where the person like drove straight on into traffic. You know what I mean? So you're just oh. like, whoa. Is this- <laughs> whoa. Um, yeah. I always joke that half of the best show is if we could like small box the control room camera and all the things that we're saying and seeing. <laughs> yeah, right. Have like <laughs> pursuit on the big screen. I think it would be like, a TV show, but it's so oh much fun. I mean, the control room is so hype when there's a pursuit. It's great. Yeah, I love that so much. Everyone loves a car chase. They're so fun you when they're happening. To do, but don't forget when it's on TV, it's really about us making sure the anchors know what to say. Oh, the helicopter. Cause like, we're just in the control room. It's like the helicopter is giving you the shot and the anchors just need to know 
you know, like, okay, now he's getting on the six of five South, but a lot of times the helicopter has that. So you're just going, no way. <laughs> oh, like you're just, everybody's yelling. It's so much fun. <laughs> I love that so much. Celebrity guest. And even mayor Garcetti, when he was the mayor was like, if I'm ever here during a pursuit, can I do it? <laughs> You guys should make a video and put that on TikTok. That's so funny. I want to see it. Yeah, it's pretty great. (laughs) Um, So I saw in our issue as well, you kind of talked about you try to not focus so much on the negative and you try to include as many uplifting, uplifting, positive stories as you can. How do you find those? I have a really good team. Okay. No, I mean, I do. I have a really good team. Yeah. Two of my um, more recent hires, uh, Mallory and Jasmine, are both from Chapel. So... But wow. I know. I know. It's just, it's coincidental because I didn't even know Jasmine at Chapman at all. She came uh-huh. to the professor as a recommendation. So I knew of Mallory through a class. Well, is there anything that you have exciting coming up that listeners should keep an eye out for? Um, I mean, it's always exciting at Good Day LA. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, the good news is, I mean, on the front of Orange Coast and LA Magazine and the group, I would say what's really fun is we're doing a lot more um, segments together. I know that LA Magazine is doing a lot of stuff at night at 6 p.m. with Alex and Marla talking about fun weekend things to do and upcoming Mm -hmm. events. I know in the mornings, um, starting on the earlier side, we do things with, um, well, I mean, I guess depending on the show, again, Good Day LA is different hours for different strokes for different folks, but um, we're using Mm -hmm. Tina Borgata, the editor-in-chief of Orange Coast. She did, um, what did she do last month? Best Eats. It was the cover of the April issue. So she yeah. came with little bites for them to taste of some of Orange County's best restaurants, hoping we can lure them down to the OC. And then yeah. this month she's going to be doing mocktails. Um, I, I'm sorry, in June, she'll be doing mocktails um, from some of these new mocktail bars that are kind of taking off. And oh, great. Uh, yeah. And we're also using guests like, you know, Dr. Todd and Gina Grat, like all the different people sort of in the magazine group. So we can sort of get a splice of what everybody's working on and sort of bleed it together so that we can help each other out, you know, with what people need to know is going on. Yeah. I love that so much. Well, we're coming to the end of our time, but before I let you go, we have three final questions that we call the thoughtful three. So what advice do you have for someone who is an aspiring producer? I mean, I would say persistence is key. And if there's a place you really want to work or somebody you really want to work for, I would say the people that I know are going to just be persistent, persistent. When I say like, hit me up in two months and they do. And I'll say, you know what? I'm busy this week. Email me on Monday. And they probably feel like I'm doing this. I'm just being honest. But the ones who are the most persistent are always the one who sort of like get the carrot, if you will. And I think that that's yeah. true with all of life. Um, persistence is key. Letting people know that you're passionate and motivated is key. Making yourself, just like I gave some examples, making yourself different. Um, not being afraid to say, hey, I'm young and I'm creative. And I have good ideas that are a little outside of the box. But if you give me a try, I think you'll see that it's just what you need. And that's exactly what I needed. So I think that's great. Definitely. How do you hope that your work as a producer impacts viewers? We touched on this a little bit. Um, I mean, I really just hope that our viewers feel like our show gives them benefit. I think that, you know, if you're going to give your time to us, whether it be 10 or 15 minutes, because you're trying to get the kids out the door, you're just turning it on to like get a little bit of news, weather traffic before you head out the door Or if you're watching long form and you kind of leave it on all morning while you're doing work at home, Mm -hmm. I always just feel like there's something for you, whether we're telling you where to get free books for your kids for the summer, um, whether we're telling you about a good deal where you can get free gas today or a cool new restaurant that's opening in your neighborhood, um, fun free camps for kids. You know what I mean? Like we're always trying to think of what do you guys need to know that's going to help you get through your day, um, make it easier, find a shortcut, have an app that'll be helpful. And I think that's what I always hope that we sort of leave a mark of like, we're always thinking about the viewer and what we think the viewer wants that, you know, to make their life easier, faster, better. Yeah. And then lastly, what is one habit or routine that you feel has helped you become successful? And I'm very excited to hear your answer for this. An alarm clock. No, um, (laughs) (laughs) I think it's changed with time. I have to be Mm -hmm. honest. And I think it's changed with my title. But I would say now in this current place that I'm at in my life, I would say for sure it really is the, the, you know, balance. But I think for me, Mm -hmm. our jobs are super stressful and they're super 24 seven. There can always be an earthquake. There can always be something that happens. And that's where we're on call. News is not a holiday forgiving job. Um, So 
gosh, I would say. Mm. <laughs> Ask me the question again. Uh, a habit or routine that helped you become successful. It sounds like you're rolling say, with being able to roll with the punches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say personally, it would be Pilates, going on walks. Like that helps me sort of like balance out the stress of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I was trying to think, sorry that it stalled for so long. But no, I I'm a Pilates girl too. And I, I literally understand day. what you mean. Right. Cause I, I'm trying yeah. to think, like, I don't do something every day, but you know what I mean? Like that's mm-hmm. like, every day to routine, but I would say like multiple times a week doing Pilates, going on walks and having the balance of things that are not stressful at all in my life. Yeah. That really like can calm you out because the minute you go to work, it's so full on and you can't sort of put the brakes on a show or live news or, or what happens in your day when you get there, you have to just be open to saying like anything can happen. So it's how I choose to spend my time off work, whether it be a Chapman or like I said, Pilates or a walk, I think is yeah. that balance that's key. Yeah. I saw something that said Pilates is like, I don't know if this is true because it was on TikTok, but um, it's like a low, co- it helps lower your cortisol. And yeah. you can like calm down and like, and I was like, there we go. I need that. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, for my job, any workout that you can do like half laying down is excellent. <laughs> for <I> mean, real. <laughs> it's, it's literally my favorite part. Right? I'm like, yeah. well, this earlier, like where, why was I asleep on Pilates all the time? <laughs> oh my God. For real. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I had so much fun getting to talk with you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course.